Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday Tea Time. Welcome back, friends. It's me, Tracy. Geraldine, feisty. Andrew, Will, and Elisa. We <laughs> have got Tuesday tea, Tuesday tea about the article that came out yesterday about paparazzi's killer convention. Lisa attended the convention. Andrew is quoted in the article. We got tea to spill. So everybody get your drink, pinkies up, and let's chat. Share this video, you guys. Make yes. sure that the word is heard around the world. Around the entire world. The whole world. The reason that we thought it would be interesting to have Elisa on is because on our previous episode, we had a guest who said that even though they were there for 33 hours, they couldn't speak to how paparazzi's corporate staff or attendees behave themselves in regards to the mask mandate and since elisa was there herself she'd like to tell us what her personal experience was mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know if y'all read the article that we're going to pin down in the comments but the article uh quoted mr andrew thompson talking about his friend joy godshock that passed away and paparazzi's lack of response to any of the deaths or illnesses that were reported from that convention. So Caroline's trying to help us with the pulling up some of the receipts we're going to have for tonight. So I hope everybody is having a good evening and we are ready to go. Okay. So tell us, Geraldine, you, I know you got a schedule. We'll try to keep it all under an hour for y'all. We'll try to keep it under an hour. I'm, I'm checking to start it. with reading this paragraph first. Or do you want to, do you want to, do you want to lead in? The article, Jennifer. Califano. Um, I, is everybody who's watching, how's your guys' volume? Because it's very clicky. Like there's something going on with the volume here. I want to make sure. I'm hearing the it's click. It's moles. They're chewing the lines. I'm hearing the clicking, but we can hear you finally at least. So the clicking mm -hmm. came in when you guys came in, but I want to see if the viewers can hear that too. And I'm trying to find out from my uh, feed what they say about that, but I just want to make sure that they can hear us so we don't do it's 45 minutes. Clear. I don't, There's I just don't want to do 45 minutes it. of people not hearing us. You know what I'm saying? If everybody can actually still hear the audio, even despite the clicking, will you just give us a heart? Because I want to keep going if Perfect. as long as you could still hear. Mm -hmm. That clicking looks like they can still hear. It's not super bad. Okay. So we're just going to keep on because we want to make sure that we don't keep everybody later than they need to be because it's 6 p.m. on the East Coast and some people need Taco Tuesday to get underway. <laughs> okay. So I don't know how many of you got to read it, but Inside Edition posted an article yesterday. Posted an article yesterday. Paparazzi accessories silent after at least five died from COVID-19 following MLM's convention, loved ones say. The convention was held at the MGM Grand Las Vegas Hotel and Casino in early August. I know what it is. Hold on. I can't do this. I swear. My OCD. Stop talking for a second. Somebody has on... Andrew, you have on your typer to where it is typing and putting the, it, it's your, on, are you on your computer? Mm -hmm. I can't I'm do typing. that. I can't do that this whole time. Yeah, I'm not typing. I think, I think it's, I think it, let me try this. Oh my God, that worked. Okay. Okay. So I'm okay. going to leave, I'm going to leave my mic off until I have to speak. Okay. Okay. Please. Right. Yes. Yes. I don't, did that do it? No. That didn't do it. Was, it. It's, it's not, not Andrew. Andrew. Who was it? Is it me? No. I don't who know who it? it is, but I can't do that. Is it somebody doesn't have echo cancellation off? That's not it. It's the reason why it's not, it's, I, I can't, I, I'm not, I don't have the terminage down, but I, it's somebody's. You yeah, guys, we can't we, to... we can't do this broadcast with the clicking because people are like, that's bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we um How about everyone just mute their mics? And I'll read the article. Talking. Okay. Until you want to talk, mute your mic. That's good. Okay. 
Okay, there's no clicking. All right. It's one of those two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to read the title and the first paragraph of this article because that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Paparazzi accessories silent after at least five die from COVID-19 following MLM's convention, loved ones say. The convention was held at the MGM Grand Las Vegas Hotel and Casino in early August. A spokesperson for the hotel told Inside Edition Digital that all guests were required to abide by Las Vegas's mask mandate. MGM said it also offers services to coincide with conventions such as testing for guests who arrive and an option for attendees to hold valid vaccine passports, but paparazzi declined to utilize these options. So direct statement from MGM Grand where the event was held, paparazzi turned down the safe attendee precautions that could have been put in place that were offered by the hotel. And if we have learned anything from the COVID crisis the past two years, it's that testing prevents the spread. Whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, getting the test when you arrive would certainly have narrowed down the number of people who were actively ill and could spread the virus. Uh, mask mandates were in place, which would have helped people who may have been actively contagious, but maybe not even symptomatic, spread the virus. And a valid vaccine passport would have meant that the attendees at the conference were vaccinated against COVID-19, which does not guarantee you won't get it or spread it, but does minimize the effects of the illness on your body. So, um, Elisa, I know that you attended the convention. I would love it if you just told us what you saw while you were there. Okay. So going into convention with the way that it was worded of all COVID or all CDC guidelines would be followed. Um, the way the tickets went out so quickly, like they were sold out like that. I was surprised I got one. I was thinking, all right, there's not going to be that many people there. They probably just put X amount of tickets out and it's not going to be that big. The first day we I got there, which was technically as the second day, um, there was tons of people. It was almost mind boggling. I was kind of taken aback because I've been quarantined for this entire time since it started. So to be in a mix of that many people, it was like, whoa. But there was nothing. You There was no temperature checks or anything. There was no one telling anybody to pull their mask up. There was a handful of times, and I actually have the pictures to back it up, that I actually would either pull my mask down or I took it off to take a picture. And I still wasn't cheek to cheek like others were or in big groups, but I put it right back on. Nobody had to tell me anything. I knew what I was doing. No. There was people, one time I saw an MGM staff member tell somebody to pull their mask up. The girl looked at the, him like he was crazy, rolled her eyes, and kept on moving. You mean so she, ignored, said, she ignored she ignored the staff ignored member? It. Completely ignored it. They were rude to the MGM staff members if they asked him to pull it up. So I don't blame MGM for not constantly enforcing it because after a while, it's like, why am I going to keep repeating myself when you're not going to listen to me? But there were no temperature checks. There was no crowd control whatsoever. It was kind of like a free-for-all. Whatever you see fits you, that's what you do. Nobody's going to do anything as far as that goes. So have you been to a paparazzi convention before? Or was this your first time? Yeah, this is my first time. I only signed up with paparazzi in January, and I just resigned this past Saturday. Wow. Because I refused. And it sounds like... Um, even though the hotel staff tried, the attendees were not interested in complying. No. Okay. So not we saw yet. ticket sales were listed at 22000 Did you go into the arena for any of the um, larger group events? I went in for all the general sessions, and I went to the Black and White Gala. And the Pitbull concert. And were, was the arena pretty full? The lower sections were. 
you weren't getting this down at the bottom part of it, this like dome style, you weren't getting a seat down there unless you were there way ahead of time, which was fine by me because I don't want to sit down there. But that section was packed. And then as you got up to the top, there wasn't that many people up there. You could find seats to sit up there. That's where me and some of my friends sat at. Well, friend, because I only have one now. But that's where we sat. We sat up top to where we could be farther away from everyone um, and wore our masks. Because there was, that was another thing. I figured they would at least have seats blocked. I know when I go to church, they had seats blocked. So it was every other seat was being sat in. Or at least. They didn't even have that. It was literally sit where you want, do as you want. The only thing that there was any type of control over was making sure those who were handicapped got appropriate seating. That was it. Okay, Jerry, do you have any questions? Yes. I, I think it's Alyssa's mic, but are you currently a paparazzi consultant? Nope. Why are you not a paparazzi consultant? Because I refuse to be a part of a company that is going to cover up their negligence and not, and not even acknowledge your own consultants who have passed. I didn't know about anything until I received a phone call from somebody last Friday directing me to Jerry's video. I didn't know nothing that was even going on. And at that point, I was done. Like, I was done. There was little things here and there that had already had one foot out the door. But once I heard of all of that and there was no mention, and then I go back and I think about what my upline doing a training or doing a pop-in video, trying to get us all motivated to keep working our business. Um, and her mention, if you heard all the drama going on with the elites, ignore it. If you haven't heard it, it's a good thing. That has replayed in my head for days. I remember it verbatim. And I remember sitting there thinking, I wonder what's going on. But I was like, well, she said it's just drama. Like, it's not nothing to do with me. Then fast forward to last Friday, and I find all this out. And I'm like, that's what you were talking about? And you didn't even have the decency to say anything? Meanwhile, ma'am, you walked around that whole convention without a mask and didn't care at all. So your upline told you, just ignore... If you hear drama, just ignore it. We're not paying attention yeah. to that. And the drama she was referring to were the COVID illnesses and deaths. That was the only thing that I, because I've done my research and seen Jerry's video, and that's the only thing that she could have been talking about. That's the only thing. Because it was all around the same time as when everyone started, you guys started speaking out, and everybody decided they were going to chime in and try to defend their crown. Mute your mic for a second, Elisa, for me. There we go. Perfect. So when you're not talking, I'm going to have you mute. And then when we ask you a question, I'm going to have you unmute. Um, this is a prime example, uh, everybody who's watching. Um, when we talk about, there's another, there's another tea time we're going to be doing very soon regarding this type of culture that's going on. And people want to say that we are being harsh when we say this is cultish, when we say that they are brainwashing you. And this is the type of behavior that we're talking about. They don't want you to hear anything else besides what they want you to hear. They don't want you to think any way else besides the way that they want you to think. And this is, we, we, you go through the bite model and we're going to be going into that too, with all the next tea times. When you go through the bite model, this is a prime example of that. They paparazzi paparazzi is very accustomed to bullying people to shut them up. As soon as you leave the company or you get canceled from the company and other consultants don't want you talking to ex consultants because now these consultants aren't afraid of getting canceled from the company anymore because they're already gone. So the truth is going to just spew out the only two people who continue to talk that have a form who have not been successfully bullied is me and Tracy period. 
And we're not because we have stop. nothing to lose. We don't work there anymore. But the other thing is, Tracy, we're not bullied very easily. That's the problem. No. And they are uh, bullies. Oh, they They're try. Straight up bullies. Crazy. So I do. You're probably going to see Lisa on more shows because. There's going to be some specific questions based on um, some trainings that they had at that convention, but we're not going to get into that this show. Um, is there anything else you want to add or Tracy, do you want to add in, in the questions based on what happened at that convention? Do you have any questions, Tracy? I'm good because I really just wanted Elisa's just her take on what she saw, just general take on what she saw, because really that says it all. That says mm -hmm. it all. So, Will, mm -hmm. are, are you raising your hand, Will? You have to unmute, Will. You have to unmute, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to ask her, like, what was her, like, how did you feel the founders were representing it, like, as far as, you know, with the mandate? How did you feel like they, as the leaders of the whole entire convention as a whole, being of the, the company, one, yeah, being the ones who hosted it, being the ones who planned it, um, and should be the ones who had done the research of knowing what was going on in Las Vegas? How do you feel like they represent? Like we knew, they should have known safety measures. After, well, let me start. So, at the convention, seeing it, and at that time. There were more times that I saw them without a mask, not social distancing or anything of the sort, than I did see them with the mask or social distancing. The one time for sure that I saw Misty wearing a mask was when we were doing like the meet and greet, take photos. And I have a photo with her where we're both wearing masks. Outside of that, they, they did whatever they wanted. What makes me mad, even more mad now is reading that article and knowing they had the option to take measures but chose not to. Why? Which a lot of us didn't know that until the article. Uh-uh. Because you know, MGM would comment, but paparazzi that. would not comment. Mm -mm. Of course they're not going to comment. Why? You, they're not going to own up to their, their guilt. So it's Which funny that you mentioned... It's funny that you mentioned them having the option to have more safety measures in place they didn't take, because we have a little video to show you. Um, this video is from the founder's brother, in case anybody's wondering who this gentleman is, the brother of the founders. And this is what he had to say. <clears throat> convention. Can you find pictures of me without a mask? Hell yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Do we have differences of opinions? Yes, we do. I'm not going to say what side's right, what side's wrong. Was there a mandate in Las Vegas? There was a mandate in Las Vegas. Was it strictly enforced? Not really. Is it my company's fault? Not really. It would come down to MGM's fault, right? No. Oh, so. That's interesting. He admitted, didn't wear a mask, mandate wasn't enforced, but it's the hotel's fault. Which is a prime paparazzi response it's always always somebody else's fault it's never their fault now we have and and i told you i actually told tracy three weeks ago that i had heard that the mgm offered testing and all these extra measures and she said i had not heard it yet i said i am trying to get that verified before we speak at it so when this article came out this is from a reputable company right they're not going to just slander what's not true and i was like touchdown this is it right here paparazzi did not want to spend more money because this was all about them making money to ensure that people were safe yeah but it's the hotel's fault of course go ahead girl go ahead that makes me so mad okay first of all you knew darn well, paparazzi, because I know y'all are watching or somebody is of your minions. You knew darn well that your own consultants were treating the MGM staff like pieces of shit. Sorry, but it is what it is. You not once went on stage and said anything, knowing that they were listening to you, that maybe you should treat the people a lot nicer. Maybe you should be courteous. You need to follow the mass mandate. You need to do X, Y, and Z. Not to mention when we were in the black and white gala and I can't even count, don't even remember exactly how many people walked for platinum. Not one of them lined up with a mask. Not one of them were behind stage with a mask. Not one of them walked the stage with a mask. But yet it's MGM's fault. 
the moment you were, I'm sure you were back there. Why were you not telling people, where is your mask? You don't got your mask when you walk in the stage. That's what I would have did. Did they make any announcements during any general session that you were in that said, remember, keep your masks on? The only, the oh, that's funny because the only announcement that was made was in the beginning of the general session, Black and White Gala that I was at and the Pitbull concert. And that announcement was made as like an announcement by MGM. As a reminder. So like a pre-recorded announcement over the speaker system, like a yes. pre-recorded, yeah. Or the DJ. It was never once paparazzi. Ever. That makes Mute. Me so mad. Mute. Okay, so my question is this. Um, you, by the way, you have your closed captions on, so your thing is typing the closed captions. That's what's going on, but we'll figure it out for next time. Yeah, they, it's, it's coming from Lisa's phone. Um, don't be me to the guest feisty. I'm not, I'm just making a point that I figured out what it was. Calm, slow your roll, slow your roll. Here's the I deal. I drink some decaffeinated tea. I think this is actually now feisty versus Tracy. It's going to be in a minute, but now you made it's me- It's organic pomegranate. You made me lose my train of thought. Anyhow, you can unmute because I have no idea what I was going to say. What was she going to say, Caroline? Um, Something about- What was her first five words? How do I turn that off? I don't even- I, I Don't, don't, don't worry it. about it. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's so- it's 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 Mute. Mute. Mute your mic. Mute. Thank you. Your speaker is echoing into your microphone, and that's what's making that noise. It's like a feedback noise. So it's actually, just, like, yeah, it's yeah. Her. You'd have to like move it. It's the feedback from your from your speaker. We'll figure it out for next time. Okay, so so I was gonna say something, but now I don't remember what it was, and we're gonna be tight on time. But um, oh, I do know now. Your CDC, your compliance guidelines. I would like to know. Um, first of all, here, I'm going to ask you a series of questions before you unmute. So that way we don't have all that. When were, when did tickets go on sale? If you can remember, it doesn't have to be the exact date. Although we know the Paw Patrols will be like, lies, it was two weeks after that. Right. Because for them, that's what's so important. Right. Um, so when, when abouts did you buy the ticket? Was there another email sent with updated CDC guidelines, right? How did people know? Because I know for a fact that there was another Q&A sent out regarding the uh, the questions and answers with COVID and the CDC guidelines because they did release that as of July 30th, that there was new CDC guidelines, blah, blah, blah. And in my video, I did the whole thing. I read the entire thing. I showed it to everybody. Do you remember getting an email or any of your uplines talking about that or them pointing out, hey, there's new CDC guidelines? I was trying to look up to see, because I should still have the email from when they told us convention ticket was going on sale. I want to say it was, it was May 18th. I want to say it was May 18th because it was after my birthday, which is in April. Um, we got an email when Las Vegas had implemented the mask mandate back in. That was the only email I ever got. I never got, this is the, you know, all they ever said was the generic, we're going to follow CDC guidelines. They never broke down exactly how they were going to follow those guidelines. So, of course, someone like me, and a lot of other people, we're going into it thinking, okay, they're going to do the typical. You go to Walmart, you stand in line, there's spacers marked. It's marked on the ground. Stand here, stand here. There was none of that either. Um, but that was the email that we got. It was just, there's a mass mandate, so we'll be required to follow the Las Vegas mass mandate. And we will follow CDC guidelines. That was it. There was no X, Y, Z. Okay, mute for a second. So I want to say something really quick. So Misty Ireland... I do agree with you, but I want to make something super clear on why a lot of us are taking our stance on this. And yes, the problem with the paparazzi convention is tickets went on sale 
way before the new Delta strand happened. We were already on a loo, like meaning we were taking our masks off. We were starting to enjoy life again. So there was many consultants who thought this is great. It's going to be our way to get back to normalcy. And then we got hit by this Delta strand at the last minute. So for them not to offer um, refunds, transferable tickets, or um, a virtual conference is a huge problem. And I am sorry, anybody out there who does not see that that's a problem is either completely brainwashed or $245 means nothing to you. One or two, one or two, okay? The other thing I'm gonna say is this, that we all know now it's not MGM's fault, okay? They could have said, if you don't do these mandates, you're done. You you can't come here. However, to still, for paparazzi and paparazzi consultants to say it's completely MGM Grant's fault is now we know is a lie. That's a complete lie. Paparazzi blatantly did not care about their consultants to the point to where they didn't offer refunds. They didn't offer ticket transfers and they didn't offer a virtual. They did not care what was going to happen next. They didn't care. I mean, right. did they even give anybody masks? No. No. Like everybody I've seen anywhere out that goes to anything for a business, they're handing out their own branded masks for nothing else than marketing. They even so, hand people a mask. So to also to clarify something else, which is a huge problem that paparazzi put in their Q&As that they expected all staff to follow CDC guidelines and mandates, which they failed to do. So if I was a, a, a guest who was going to go, just like Lisa, you would assume that they would be taking those precautions and they would be enforcing the rules, which they did zero. And I have not just talked to Lisa, but I have talked to several consultants who after that convention was done, because what they alluded to what would happen there was a different reality than what did happen there. So right. if I bought tickets for an event, um, is it my choice to go? Yes. If I read the Q&A based on what paparazzi released, it says that they're expected to follow all CDC guidelines. So I have some type of faith that I may be somewhat safe. You get there, it's a whole nother story. Tell me how that's not paparazzi's fault. Tell me how paparazzi is not uh, 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 responsible for that. I don't understand how anybody can argue and it's this. Not like, it's not like you're going to a friend's birthday party across town, right? People flew in, rented hotel rooms that were non-refundable, spent a great deal of money, under the expectation that these guidelines will be followed so they would be relatively safe if they as safe as they can be they didn't say it's a free-for-all just show up or don't show up they said we'll follow cdc guidelines people expected a certain level of protection to be provided and administered and enforced correct this was a big undertaking you didn't know that it was not going to happen until you got there plane ticket Gas money already spent, Correct. room already reserved. You've already spent and lost money. There are people who have talked to us and said they walked in, looked around, and went right back to their room. And so didn't before we let because they were uncomfortable. Correct. I have to. Before we let Lisa go, or or you, you don't have to leave at all. But I do have another question for you. Is uh, you can say your upline's name or not say your upline's name. It's totally up to you. Although I'd love to know who it is. <laughs> that's um, real tea now. Yep, that, that's mm -hmm. tea. For Lisa, were you LOP? Okay, some somebody was at, was saying that uh, when they received their LOP awards, paparazzi staff weren't even wearing masks that were handing out the, the awards. Okay, and so the next question, Lisa, I have for you is, mute that, please. <laughs> I can't, you guys, I can't. I have OCD, I can't. Thanks. Yes, loves. Um, my next question is, did your upline um, strongly influence people to go to convention? And what was the verbiage on that or the trainings or your uplines, uplines um, kind of discussions on convention? So from what he said with the LOP, from what I've been told from my friend who got awards, they weren't wearing masks. So that's a whole, totally correct. And as far as my upline, I was pushed to think that if I didn't go to convention, I was not serious about my business. If I didn't go- Wait, would you- 
Would you like to repeat that for the people That's in the fine. back? If I didn't no, no. go to the convention, I was not serious about my business. And they even made it, and not just my upline, I heard other elites say it. They even made it to where, like, it would be known if you didn't go. Oh. They're watching. They will know if you don't go. And then, of course, they throw in, you're not going to get those those exclusive pieces if you don't go. And then I find out when I get there, I'm going to get them eventually when they do release. But whatever. Um, yeah. We were pushed to go. And it's not a secret either because every elite has access to the names of every consultant in their downline that registers to go to convention. They are aware immediately who got tickets and who didn't. And if there's tickets remaining, how they can manage to get the people they want to be there to be there. Correct. Mm. So no, there's no pressure at all, except that they yeah. value and how you can't possibly be serious. Back to the whole selling of tickets. I'm looking through my email. So I was right. It was May 18th that it went out. That tickets were released. Okay. They sent out another email on June 15th stating that more tickets we're going to be available on June 16th. So they added tickets. Now I was thinking maybe people decided not to go. So they canceled their tickets. So they're adding more in. I almost, in my heart, I feel like they saw that they could get away with having more people and they allowed more people. And that ticket time sold out too within minutes. Wasn't it their largest convention too during the pandemic? Like this was the one, from my understanding, this was one of their largest attended conventions. The largest. And they were proud of that. Is that accurate, Tracy? So if they said 22,000 tickets were sold, our largest convention ever. That was a Pavarazzi statement. Um, I would also like to point out the reason I asked Elisa how crowded the arena was when she went to any of the sessions that she attended was on the MGM Grand website. It says their grand arena holds 17,000 people. They sold 22,000 tickets, which means that there was not even one seat for every attendee, much less a place to space between parties or groups or individuals. And... I think that says it all. When you mentioned that they could sell more tickets because the arena would hold more, maybe the hotel told them that they no longer had a restriction and they could be at full capacity if CDC guidelines were followed. Who knows? We're never going to get the real story. I'm just speculating about that, but you're right. If they had two separate ticket releases, why would they need two separate ticket releases? I don't remember there being two separate ticket releases in the years that I was um, that he had access to purchasing tickets. Does anybody else remember there being two separate ticket sales? Two waves? No. Nope. Also the first year not transferable that I can recall. Correct. Mm -hmm. And and like, so I'm going to ask Lisa because she was a consultant up until she said, you guys are full of shit. Um, Which I applaud you, girl. Seriously. That's ethics right there. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But so I know that you said a little bit about how you felt about Taylor Kirby. But honestly, Taylor Kirby is the founder's brother. So when Taylor Kirby speaks about things that, A, he doesn't know because he's sticking blindly up for his brother's company, do you think that people tend to listen to him more than other people because of based on his... um position as the brother's founder? I mean, does he have any business speaking about things with the company that is completely lies? I do think people like take his word for everything because he's so close to them. I never knew who he was until convention from hearing everybody, Taylor Kirby, Taylor Kirby. And I'm like, who the heck is Taylor Kirby? And then when I seen him, I was like, I don't understand what the hype is, but okay. It was almost like you would have thought he was famous. Mm -hmm. You would have thought he was famous the way everybody flocked to him. Mm -hmm. And thank God I'm not one of those people that flock to people like that, even famous people. But 
he, they did. They flocked. He always had a crowd around them. So my thing is, you put yourself or they put you, whoever, you are now in that space where you have people who will listen to you, who will hang on your every word. Why, when you're in these groups, are you not telling people, hey, don't forget, put your mask back up when we're done this. You know what I mean? Like, if we're taking a picture, just pop it back up. Something. You weren't. You were partying and having a good time and didn't get, like, you didn't care. Why would he? The very founders of the company do not care. They didn't care. They set the example from the very top. Why would right. he? Why would he? Right. And that's exactly my point. Right. Nope. And that's exactly my point. The way that this company is ran and the excuses that the consultants, the bullying, the um, way they're brainwashed to stick up for the company or you lose everything. This comes from the top down. This does come from a made up compliance area. This comes from the founders, the founders, brother, sorry. My hats are falling. The founder's brothers, it comes from the, the founder's brother. It comes from the top down. So when Taylor Kirby is out there calling names, bullying, telling lies about how the convention went down, all these things, it has a lot of weight. And I personally think that if the company was serious about how people felt about them, he should be reprimanded just like anybody else, anybody else. But he's untouchable. So Taylor Kirby can spew out the mouth threaten that he knows where females live, call minors names, be completely gross and disgusting and flat out lie and nothing happens to him. And if you're a consultant in paparazzi and you feel that's okay, boo-boo, you got a lot of brainwashing going on in, in your head completely. Am I the only one that thinks that Trent was probably flipping his gourd when he saw Taylor, saw Taylor say that? Oh, it was the MGM's fault. I thought he was sitting there going, ah, lawsuit. <laughs> No, I don't they think don't care. any of them do because I, I think if they cared at all, that would have all been handled completely differently. Correct. I think that so it's been a month since convention. Actually, sorry, two months. It's October. It's been a month since we started seeing people pass away. Still no words. Still nothing about. You know, we're even not not even a, a condolences. Not even a we're sorry. And, and let not me, even yeah. Let, let me say this. Andrew, something you may not know, that that video that he did was not taken down until that article came out. So they were hoping that it would be all hush hush and nobody would find out that the MGM offered these extra precautions. And, and we, we're not going to talk about what we don't know that's for a fact, right? Now that it's out in the article, all of a sudden that video comes down. You want to know who was on that video that day that he was talking about it? Shani. If he, she was literally, he's like, hi, Shani, how are you? So she literally acknowledged that she was on that video, watching that video. If they had a problem with it, then Andrew, they would have told him to shut his pie hole and take it down. They did not. They no, want people. Come out. They want, they want the manipulation. They want the lies. They want that type of mindset. So these people don't leave the business and they keep on buying jewelry to put money in their gross, greedy, vile pockets because let's be real what these consultants that go on and defend them are doing is basically marketing on behalf of a company that literally does not care whether they live or die and what they don't get and what i try to keep telling some people like friends that i still have maybe not after this but on the inside of it all is I don't care if you're a jet setter, a Lux jet setter, even an impressionista, if God forbid they want to cut the head off that snake, you will be just as dead to them as I am, as Jerry is, as Tracy is, as she is, everybody. Like to as my husband is like, we're all, we, a lot of us sitting right here were, you know, pretty high up in the company. You know, Jerry, for God's sake, Empire Diamond, the very first, we couldn't walk around anywhere without getting lines formed behind us back then, you know? And we don't matter. And they don't get that the minute they want to cut you down, you won't either. And okay. and it's just gross. The whole thing's gross to me. I don't know. I mean, if you like the product, sell the product. But if you just like jewelry that's inexpensive, we know lots of places that you can get the same jewelry at the same price point. You don't have to buy it from a wholesaler that you no longer 
respect. You can take the jewelry that you have that you own and sell it for whatever price you want. You can acquire new jewelry that looks just like it for less money because despite the fact that they're constantly telling you at these events that we design all of this, it's exclusive, honey. It's on Nihau, it's on Asu, it's on Joyous de Sheen, it's on every Chinese wholesaler on the interwebs. It and is before, not exclusive. Before, before Lisa talks right now, see these, they look like paparazzi. They're not. I got them for they're not even they're not a paparazzi hoop. See these? Also, ask me how much I paid wholesale. 78 cents. Come on. I mean, not five dollars, but they are nickel and lead and cadmium compliant. Whatever. Chris, don't even get me started on whether no, we got a whole tea time for that, my friend. We do. We got another tea time for that. Okay. Okay. You wanted to ask? Did you want to ask Lisa something else? I no, she has something. Lisa. I wanted what really all the tension stuff did me in. What really, really, truly did me in is to find out that they couldn't even acknowledge the people who passed. The fact that you literally just wiped them off like they're nobody. But then let's hit October. And actually it was before we hit October because it was last week before the first, I believe maybe a day or two before, we're getting told about, oh, we're doing paparazzi possible to go help, to help the kids in the Dominican. I'm all for helping the less fortunate, but you can't even put your hand out to help the consultants that passed away from your company. You can't put a bracelet out in memory of, you can't put a post, you can't do anything for your own consultants. Why? Because you're getting a bigger tax write off to help them kids over there. I don't buy it. And then <clears throat> just literally I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it and I'm like, I didn't even know. So then for you to trickle down and have all of your elites sit there and do your dirty work for you, make sure we don't find out. I felt horrible. When I found all that out, I dropped to my knees that night because I was on my phone researching until about midnight, a little bit after. I dropped to my knees and I just prayed. I, was, I felt so bad, so bad. And I felt guilty because I was there. You put that guilt on me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, I did go and it was my choice, but I shouldn't be weighing the weight for your, your problems and what you did wrong. That bothers me. But then on top of it, you can't even speak out. Like I would respect them if they said, look, I'm sorry. I'm here for y'all something, but you have been completely silent. And I know there's people who are going to watch this or probably watching it right now that are the little minions, like I like to call them, for their elite leaders. And I want you guys to remember, when you go and you pass, your tombstone ain't going to say paparazzi independent consultant. It's going to say your name, mother, daughter, whatever you are outside of that. Wait, tap that. So don't forget. No, if your tombstone did say that, they would want to sue you. They would probably send you, they would probably send you a letter to the grave. Cease and desist, dead ass. Cease and desist. <laughs> Can we address though how they, you know, knew all this was going on, like the company, and while instead of, you know, while they were busy deleting the profiles, instead of acknowledging it on their Instagram, it was more selfie September and post a selfie of what you're so thankful about. Happy, the paparazzi. happy birthday, Ryan and Shannon. Yeah, but not a single acknowledgement of anything, not a nothing. And they actually disabled comments on TikTok. They limited comments on Instagram. If you weren't commenting, cute, beautiful, I love this, I worship you your comment was deleted or they had like certain words that were banned or limited. Sure did. And they still do on Facebook and Instagram. If you look up paparazzi accessories, it is still that way. All the pictures are still there and they have not yet once didn't even do like a day of silence. One, like nothing, not a thing. <coughs> Continue. Yeah, so I, I checked today, by the way, and you mentioned that they're going to do a collection for the orphanage in the Dominican. I checked today. At least two consultants who've passed away have GoFundMe's. Um, one is for Temple and Clint Masters that the requested amount to bury both of them to assist with their funerals, a double funeral, $15,000. And Miss Joy Gottschalks was uh, a fundraiser for $10,000 to help with the funeral expenses for her and her husband. Um, <coughs> neither one of those met their limit. So as much as these elite leaders want to tell everybody how much they loved their consultants and how sorry they are, and oh, it's just so terrible, but we're going to go on. Um, 
they they didn't even amongst them all chip in. They make hundred thousand dollars and up a month as a, as a jet setter and above, right? Average yeah. check of hundred and some thousand dollars. Jet setter like forty to sixty. Um, lux, jet 60, setter. sixty to eighty, a hundred. Then impressionista, you know, and so, so if every one of them chipped in a hundred bucks. Those GoFundMe's would have been blown out the door. They'd have doubled. But their their GoFundMe's are still lacking um, in contributions and haven't even met their minimum amounts. Okay, I'm their GoFundMe's are still sitting there. If I'm an um, iconic impressionista or something like that, I'm I'm paying for the whole damn thing, especially if it's you know my own downline. Right, but um, those same I mean, lines are currently are currently in a contest that we have screenshots for. They're currently in a contest trying to add people to their teams. Um, the top prize is a two thousand dollar back office credit. You know how much two thousand dollars would have done to help the families of those consultants that passed away, even if they gave a thousand to both family members. Do you have that screenshot handy? Because I want to show that it's fat. So I'll like, post it in the comments. I, Caroline walked off with her phone because she's got something to say, do. But it's yeah. Since, well, especially since you don't have it, that's a hundred percent fact. Because I was on the team of Mandy's, and before I quit, I was still in that team, and I saw it. It's a whole October it, rainbow yeah, spirit or rainbow challenge for the month. And they're doing everything from recruiting people. Why? Because you're losing everybody because everybody's fed up with your stuff. Okay. Recruiting people, sales, how much people are buying their PVs. They're pulling out the nines. So it's 100% fact. They are focused right now on how they're going to keep making themselves rich. And let's not discount the fact that that $2,000 back office credit will filter right back into the very pockets of the upline who assigned it. That's I mean, right, because all you get for that is to buy stuff in the back office for to, to, to make your uplines overall volume grow. It right. isn't for you. Let's be it's real. A back yeah. office credit is for your upline. It's basically a legal way to bonus buy for yourself. That is correct. Correct. So let me let me make it very clear why we are talking about this. Okay. Mute mute your thing real quick. Jerry just shows Andrew's dog. <laughs> yes. I love, Let me I make love. it because I will. I want to try to make this enjoyable for people to be able to watch without like, because they're going to stop watching if we have all of this, right? Like, I would drive me crazy. Um, Sorry, we were having food delivered. That's okay. Let me make something very clear. They're using every type of rhetoric out there to try to debunk what Tracy and I, and now a lot of other people are joining in this crusade, so to speak, to talk at. And one of their things was, well, if Tracy and Jerry or any of these people who are so upset is pissed, and we heard it from our last guest on our last show, why don't you have a GoFundMe account? And my response was, if I did a GoFundMe account under me, you would say that now, not only am I trying to capitalize on people's deaths, even though you won't even talk about your friend, um, you're going to accuse me of taking monies based on somebody else's passing. Mm -hmm. Now, there was many GoFundMe accounts for these people. However, you can filter through and look at the type of donations or the cost donations that were given to these downlines their very own teammates from these high-end leaders who make over 50, 60, 70, a hundred thousand dollars a month, people. A month. a month, not a year, a month. I want I challenge you to go look at that. Hunter Matthews, five hundred dollars for Joy Gotchocks. How does that make you feel, Andrew, knowing how much money he breaks brings in, right? Uh Erica Cole. $500. These people make enough money in one month to pay for the entire funeral. So I want to know why they still haven't even met their funeral goals based on how much, how much money these people make. They make enough money, Mandy Heinch, to actually say, I'm going to pitch in $2,000 of back office credit from my pocket to whoever, you know, brings in recruits so they can easily shell out money for recruitment to get people into this nasty company, but they can't give money for people who've passed away. You know why? Those people aren't making a money anymore. That's exactly what I was going to say. It, as soon as you are no longer adding to the bottom line, you do not matter whether you quit or pass away. 
you don't make them money. You have no value. This is a network marketing company. It's not a family. No, no matter how much they call everybody. And you're brainwashed them. into believing that. And Happily. I know that people join businesses for many different reasons. And some people have told me specifically, I joined for something to do. I joined because I lost my husband and I needed to get out of the house. And this helped me be brave. I met a whole team of people. I got my social life back. All of that stuff is great. But you can do that without doing a network marketing business. You just use that as a vehicle. It's a vehicle. It's not your family. It is not a real relationship. It is a commercial relationship. And we are going to have a tea time here coming up soon where we have a person that helps people deprogram from cults come and talk to us about how network marketing's techniques to get you to stay and be loyal to them are just, just like religious cults that have people um, tied in mentally to their mission and basically have all of their money stripped from them, their contacts with their family, alienating relationships. I mean, we have somebody in our recovering paparazzi consultants group, these two sisters who were actually never consultants themselves, but their sister's a consultant. And when she went to speak, when they tried to speak to her about the amount of money she's spending, that she's got all this jewelry in her house, that she's not making any cash, she blocked both her sisters on social media and won't take their phone calls. What was that? She blocked her blood family for her paparazzi team. There are dangerous techniques afoot here. This company, if they don't know about it, I would be shocked. I'm well, not really saying that they've created a brainwashing campaign and they pass it down to you in a special pill that you swallow, but they are reaping the benefits <clears throat> of these techniques from their elite consultants and they're letting it go by without doing anything to change it. And funnily enough, that person we were talking about that was given $2,000 away to somebody in their uh, recruitment challenge, they're having a paparazzi opportunity live right now to uh, conflict with our tea time. So, you know, uh -huh. people have to choose whether they get the truth or the bullshit. So I want to say Andrew Thompson, for those of you guys who don't know, we've done 50 minutes without actually inter producing him properly he's uh, the one that was he's the one that was interviewed a lot not the only one but a lot for that article that came out so i would love for andrew to talk a little bit about that for me um about what how it all came about and stuff yeah because <clears throat> i'm glad you uh gave me the opportunity to kind of touch on that because i didn't like seek that out you know that kind of came to me um the way that it all kind of happened in the very beginning was, um, you know, we were, me and Will were actually planning to go, my husband here, um, we were planning, we were talking about him kind of planning to go to Vegas at first because he's never been to Vegas. He wanted to go and see it. And, you know, I still had a lot of people I considered really close friends or like even family. I mean, because our former team is, you know, one, the third biggest leg is my first cousin and she would be there. You know, she was walking as a lead. I was supposed to be there to cheer her on, you know. Uh, it, so we were kind of planning to go. And um, as time was leading up to that, we had a lot kind of go on. Like uh, we had the snake bite incident where we lost our baby boy, our uh my dog of 12 years, bitty bitty. Wait, so that happened. Then around the same time, we were reading about the Delta variant and another variant, actually, I think called the Lambda variant that was emerging in Vegas at that time being found in sewers and stuff. And it was, you know, it was like a red zone. And so we were kind of like, oh, hell no. Mm -mm. We, ain't, we ain't even going there. Like, this is that's too risky. We, at that time, hadn't had our vaccines yet. We were waiting on FDA approval, um, all of that. So we, you know, watched from Facebook, like everybody else, all the pictures and all of that. And, you know, we kind of thought and commented to ourselves, you know, not publicly at all, just like, well, they're not really looking very distant there. Nobody's really wearing a mask, like, ooh, even Misty and all them, like, we kind of thought, okay, that's weird. But, you know, we assumed maybe they were all vaccinated. They were probably safe. They, they had their, their adults. They had their own choice. They had their reasons. And, um, when people started coming back, we started noticing more and more posts, you know, the whole, yeah, it was like our whole news feed was starting, 
so and so i'm i'm in the hospital with covid i'm i'm sick my mom's sick now my dad my husband everybody in the household's sick like it seemed for a while like every person including many that i knew came back either flat out saying they had covid or alluding to it but without saying it like they didn't want to say it because you know god they got to get that jewelry out and they wouldn't want anybody to know that they might have been touching it with covid heaven forbid and so it went on and on and i just kind of was like man that sucks um and then we heard about temple masters um i did not know her um but i was still just you know like struck by the tragedy of it because she was young and beautiful like you don't i i thought when i think of you know somebody with comorbidities dying of covid just as a respiratory therapist i'm like okay they're probably really overweight they're very diabetic they have a lot of comorbidities and she looked beautiful you know healthy happy and to see she died and then her husband that was tragic and but what really hit home for me specifically was joy gottschall um she was really precious one of my former downline teammates um and she was just precious she would we would me and my husband when she loved and adored us and we loved and adored her we'd pop on her lives all the time you know she'd be like will and andrew are here everybody say hello to them but she was just so sweet and um she was a customer of ours too at our business you know she was but she was just so sweet and we hadn't even invited her and don to come down here they've been saying they wanted to come to florida we had invited them to come down you know sometime after convention to come and stay here at our house and because we live like five minutes from the most beautiful beaches here and uh so you know when i saw that she was in the hospital i remember my heart sinking right off right off kind of thinking like oh shit, you know because she was a good bit older she had a lot of health problems um and i thought mm, this ain't good you know this ain't good and um we i tried to keep in touch with her you know we even um i was talking to her cousin carolyn and uh she was like she's feeling really down you know she's just not doing really well and she was like you know maybe you could reach out to her and so i tried to reach out to her and she didn't respond like i guess she couldn't because she was so sick because I sent her a little video, you know, telling her we were thinking about her and praying for her and everything. And um, I don't know that she ever seen it. Um, I still, I mean, obviously I still have the messages there, but um, I hear nothing for a few days and the next, a few days later on, um, what was it, August 23rd or 4th, um, we get a message from her cousin that says that uh, she had just passed away. She had had a stroke as a, condition i believe that was don't quote me on that i believe that's what she said um because of covid you know it makes you have blood clots and they go to your that went to her brain i guess and she passed away and we i just remember my jaw dropping and going um like baby i was like joy just passed away and he was like and that he yelled across the room like no -uh. like he thought i was messing with him you know because she's just one of those you know bundles of joy like a fitting name um and we just couldn't believe it and uh, so that happened, we were devastated. And then the stories continued to pour in. Um, more and more people in ICU, positive for COVID, dying. Like we've heard 11, 12, like, I don't know how many actually were at the convention that passed away from COVID or complications thereof after the fact. But so far, I think like how many? Um, we have a list that is like 17. Wow. And so, I know that the article only confirmed the names of the people that the author of the article, the reporter, actually reached out to their families and confirmed directly. Right. But through the grapevine, we've heard more. People who posted on Facebook, we just took that as, I don't know why anybody would fib about it. So we're just going to assume that if they posted it, that it's mm -hmm. accurate. But we right. have a list that says 17. Wow. That's even more than I'd heard. Um. So how it ended up happening with that is I, you know, of course, posted, you know, um, pray for the family of Joy Gottschalk. She's passed away, you know, and um, I guess my post got circulated through the paparazzi community, I guess, a lot. And um, it ended up on some of these people that were already talking. See, people like these uh, MLM boss babe and some uh, maybe even Savannah were, were talking about this before I even realized that that 
people were coining it the super spreader convention, you know, and all of that. I wasn't even thinking of it like, oh, point blame finger, you know, or anything at the moment. I was just kind of shocked and devastated that we, you know, the lady that we just loved had passed away and so many people were sick. Um, so I guess Maya, the um, reporter from Inside Edition had somehow came across my post or talked to somebody who talked about me, I don't know. And she reached out to me and, you know, just, we ended up talking on the phone for like an hour one afternoon, just about the company, about what had happened, all of that. And it just kind of went from there. I was kind of shocked when I read the article. I didn't realize she was going to quote me so much. Um, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it's just been a real whirlwind of a crazy experience. And the more it all went on, the more, what, what I want people to understand is y'all know, I used to be just as Kool-Aid drinking, pink lemonade as everybody. You know, I was paparazzi. I screamed their praises like everybody else. Um, and it's not just a thing of, oh, he's mad. He's not in it no more, blah, blah, blah. Like, screw that. I'm happy. I, you know, we do our own thing now. It What it is, what started getting me pissed off about it was when I saw <clears throat> a, a couple people who I'm not going to name here, but, you know, high-ranking people post, you know, they're memorializing them in the post, you know, of Joy specifically, including pictures with her at convention and things like that. And then within a day or two, the posts are suddenly gone. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And through a family member of well, someone who passed away, because I don't want to, this, see, this family member is still in paparazzi too. So I don't want to out right. her as having spoken to me about it. She sent me a screenshot from a her leader who had shared it from her up, 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 up leader, like A, B, C, D, E up there. You <laughs> know. Um, and it are, was you permitted to use the, are you permitted to use the literary? I mean, really, I don't know. I might get another cease and desist. You know, I'll try. I could pull it out. Be a case in just it be a case and just a D apostrophe sis because I don't yeah. think any. I don't even know if the, if the lawyers allowed to use the letter. I think I still have it in my safe right here. I could pull it out. Um, but anyway, yeah. I mean, I'm. I'm like, I don't care. Bring it, whatever. Because I'm not gonna. Eat. Here's the thing. I've been threatened so much by right. by the ex, by you name it. All these windbag blowhard people that want to do that to us and bully you and try to shush by throwing a temper tantrum on social media. And I just think it's cute. I'm like, you know what, if you want to try to come at me with that legal mumbo jumbo, you're not going to shut me up either. You're going to make me louder because I'll go live and I'll just show them every single piece of paper you send to my mailbox. I will tell them every single thing you've ever done. Anyway, getting off topic here. Um, no, and I will. I will say something though, because uh, a lot of people there. We have gotten a lot of feed. I have received a lot of feedback that they want to hear um, Ashley's story. They want to hear Heather Dill's story, and they, of course, would want to hear Andrew's story. And we are absolutely going to do that. Like we have so much lined up for tea times that Tracy and I are thinking about doubling down on tea time. We're going to so have we to can get it. So we can get it all out, right? Because we want to keep the videos an hour, you know, long oh, yeah, or an yeah. hour, 15 minutes long so people can watch it. But a lot of this information has to come out. Mm -hmm. And and I, so definitely Andrew's going to come back on and he needs to definitely prepare because he has a whole, whole, whole lot of tea. He has a whole lot of tea. Yeah. Um, yes, and, even, and I'm waiting for that because... Even Andrew and I, we will be able to talk about other tea that took place in paparazzi together between him and I as well. Uh -huh. And uh, Andrew is one of the most, we talk, we almost talk about it daily, genuine, uh, amazing people I have ever met. And I told him that from day one, the day that we met, I even predicted his demise. <laughs> I even predicted that to him. And uh, knew what was going to kind of come down the pipeline. But uh, Andrew and I, a Andrew is an honest, 100% amazing person. He's just so amazing, you know. And I I, I, I am so glad you talked to uh, that news reporter because that's exactly what we needed. This is the first real 
independent news channel nationwide that has picked up this story, which is why Amy we award are so winning. excited. Amy Award oh, yeah. winning, Maya Chung. Um, Correct. Before I got off topic, what I wanted to say, the only the reason I wanted to do that, and you know, we worried about our business suffering, about people being mad that we spoke out. I told you about that, Jerry and Tracy, a lot. I was like, oh, this is eating me alive. I want to say something, but I don't. Because like, what if, what if, you know what I'm thinking? Worst case scenario, I want to just, I'm like, oh, but I told you one day, I was, the day I made that post, I was like, I just I feel like my silence is complicity at this point. And I just had to say what I had to say and said it just as nice as I could say it, you know. But um, the news article thing, I wanted to do that because I felt like it needed to be said for the, re the reason I was pissed is like I said, the lack of acknowledgement is as simple as this. It's not a big, long, drawn out story in regards to this. It's as simple as the lack of acknowledgement from the company, the founders. It's the lack and then the cover up. The shush, we have to protect paparazzi's image. Yeah, and if you. And it, yeah. What? Oh, they were sending. Oh, to the they were. God, girl, you know, I've had my my shit in the past okay like i've been arrested before i don't hide anything because they'll try to throw that out at me later and be like oh right. he so i'll just head it right off at the pass one of the very high rank high highest ranking people in paparazzi sent this reporter a mug shot of me to try to discredit me How you oh like? i'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. that you did an article interview to help memorialize your friend because they and were trying to make him a race. Some paparazzi psycho Hun. Sent your d spent money to get a background check so they could pull that up and send it to the reporter to try to discredit the things you are saying now. Two of them. Two two consultants did so that. So let's be real, people. Well, when we say the bullying, it's not just name calling on social media. Mm -hmm. We he, had the founder's brother tell everybody that they had our home addresses and would be finding us. We had um, another, what is she? What are the one whose name we're not supposed to say that's got an E in it? E. Um, yeah, um, E. coli. She uh, posted the, the names of the administrators of our recovering paparazzi consultants group and then said, stay tuned. We're going to post the name of every member of this group so you can get to know the Karens and Kens that are trying to take away your job. First of all, it's not your job. You're an independent contractor. You don't work for the company. And second, that's called doxing, and it's actually a crime. It's a cyber crime, and you're cyberbullying. Boo. Boo. Bra, bra. <laughs> not, not to mention, so, and and you guys, it, it we have screenshots of all of it, by the way, to back it up. But, my yeah, my tea time that yeah, I we did. Can see it. Is it straight or is it backwards? I don't know. I can't read it. I can see it, but I can't read it. I'd have to like put it on something bigger because I'm yeah, old. Have I got to... old eyeballs. My my tea time that I did where I said that I loved uh, Andrew and that he would be coming on and sharing his story soon. What happened after that? The the high elite. I guess we're not supposed to say his name, although I would love to just say it. Yeah. The high elite that he broke from in his experience with paparazzi posted a whole lot of stuff and all of these high-end elites including erica cole jumped on his post and was talking about burying bodies feeding them to hogs cutting a motherfucker who do i have to kill who am I gonna i'll help you hide the body i'll help we you got, hide the body we got all of it and you want to say that we're the bullies because we're ousting paparazzi on their yeah. negligence and disgust oh and so I'm I'm people got COVID at i have never i've never created a post where we're talking about going and killing a motherfucker <laughs> ever or making passive aggressive temper tantrums like a child on social media. Like it's gross. Like it really. And all this to try to distract from the message mm -hmm. that people got COVID at a convention that never should have happened. There's no corporate responsibility taking. We're calling them on it and it's gross. All mm -hmm. of these threats and all of this doxing and all of this other stuff. There's Caroline with the quote. See it? I will, what did it say? Hide the body. I will hide the, the body for you. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that. And I'm telling all you, all of this physical threats, 
literal threats of murder because we pointed out that the company that they buy cheap jewelry from was 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 irresponsible and negligent in having a convention. But they they're so dedicated to this company that literally would take their name off a banner within seconds of knowing they passed away. Like that. It's it's it it makes no sense to me. It's it's an obsession and it's a it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Look at the cover up of it all. That's what pissed me off and pissed in my cheerio so much. Like, why are you trying to like who told her to say that to her downline? That had to come from somewhere. Like Correct. that was to me like sick. Like we have to like if you read what I said in the end of that article, it's ex she did good at quoting me because I, it was verbatim. I said, "Screw paparazzi and their image." Like that is so that is maddening to me. You know, if all we if they said we're our so founders, hard, we must we protect our founders. Either. And their image, I, what I was trying to show you is a screenshot from my messenger. And it's from me and Shani, May 16th, 2019. This is an unsolicited message that she sent me saying, the beach looks amazing. I'm only slightly jealous. Like she started that conversation. So we were, you know, cool enough that she would say hello and send a message. Like I didn't send that. She seen my post and sent me that message. We're cool. Fast forward to today, you know, August 24th. Here's all I said. And we're talking about these founders that laid, laid, what, what am I trying to say? You know, that hung the moon, hung the moon. And that we worship in paparazzi as if they're gods. I don't, so all I said to her, if I can get this to show up. I see it. Uh, Joy, one of my former downlines, she passed away today after catching COVID at convention. Her name was Joy Gottschalk. I just wanted her to know she existed. Do you see what that is below that now? Yeah. What does it say? This person is unavailable on Messenger. She blocked oh. me. There you go. Blocked me just for saying that. I didn't say you're responsible. Y'all saw it. It's in here in the video. I didn't say y'all are so negligent. You're terrible. I just said like her name was Joy. I wanted you to know she existed because let's be real to her. She's a number. She was probably three, six, nine, four, two, four. And I just wanted her to see her face and know she existed. Bam. Block. She hadn't blocked me when I went live drunk when I used to drink. Ranting on Facebook when I've talked trash about my ex, about E, about anything I've done when I was, you know, not in the best headspace, as you wouldn't be after coming out of a cult and being raked over the coals the way I was. Never blocked me before, still talk to me from time to time, like my pictures, but even came on Royal Emporium Live. Andrew, she didn't even block you when you told her off about how disgusting they were with what they did to me. She still didn't block you. And now I'm he's not even there. Right. Maybe that's maybe that's her excuse. Maybe maybe that's her excuse. She was just waiting. <laughs> and, and now, um, and now she like, you because you mentioned a deceased member in paparazzi. That's disgusting. I would that's like to point out disgusting. that when I got fired, I blocked every single one of them, including everybody from corporate and everybody that carried bags on the diamond trip and everybody that I could think of. In fact, I got a screenshot from Facebook that said, "You are no longer allowed." Um, to do this activity. We sometimes limit activities uh, for the safety of our whatever, blah, blah. They, they only let me unfriend 2,499 people before they stopped me from unfriending anybody for a week. Oh my because God. they thought you were, a, 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 they thought you were being hacked. Oh, I was, I was hacking. All right. I was hacking off dead limbs from my tree, from my tree of life. So, I was whacking them off. Well, I'm going to say something in closing. Cause we definitely have to go. Um, Oh, my electricity came back on. Thank that's why I really had to go. I was like, where's my electricity? Okay. <sighs> okay. I do want to say this. Jerry just lit up suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Electricity. No, that was when I left paparazzi. Uh, true. Um, I, I'll get a lot of questions about I get comments from people. Jerry, just let it go. Jerry, this is exhausting. Jerry, don't you care about the the people who um, are still in paparazzi and they're feeding their families. And then I get the people who really think they're going to pull at my heartstrings and say, Jerry, what about Monica Cox? So I'm going to address that right here on this tea time right now. So you're very clear 
about how I feel about people still in paparazzi who are recruiting people on their team. Now, if you're still in paparazzi, trying to figure out your next game plan on how you're going to make money outside of paparazzi, I got no problem with you. If you're still in paparazzi and you are lying to your team, you are still telling them not, and she went live with her team and said, don't listen to Jerry, right? Don't listen to anything she has to say because they, she wants to keep them brainwashed to keep money going in her pocket. She is also involved with the recruiting challenge and Mandy Heinz giving $2,000 plus she's giving um, hostess rewards to this recruiting challenge to get people to join this company. When I was her best friend and she said, for a fact, she's the one that got me thinking it was a cult. She's the one who said, Jerry, we are in a cult. This is not healthy. And I was like, oh girl, you are tripping. I started doing my research on cults and it opened my eyes. And that's when I started sticking up for my team and the disgustingness. And I went on a tailspin of fuck you, paparazzi, fuck you, paparazzi. And anybody who can recognize it and still monetize on it and gain and still want to pull people in underneath you, you are scum. You are disgusting. You are part of the problem and you want to sit there and say that you. Oh, they cut her off. Who cut I, her off? I think her signals or something, her Wi-Fi message went out with the. I think somebody got her off. Well, I hate to I hate to interrupt a good rant. So if she comes back, we'll let her please. carry on. But uh, can I say something? Yeah, Elisa, please do. I wanted I wanted to thank um, you first of all for coming, but absolutely. No, thank you for letting me. This all that has been weighing on me, and I'm so glad I got to speak. But so last, I want people to understand they don't just go after people who leave that were high ranking or had reasons or things to lose okay i was nothing i started in january i was a star consultant just trying to find my way and was i all in sure i was sure was but when it comes down to me i have morals i have integrity and i have a heart and i will not sell my soul to the devil for five dollars let alone a million dollars okay so last night i get a phone call from a friend of mine who's still a consultant to tell me that it was discussed that I'm one of the people now in the, the recovering paparazzi group and that they're watching me. Let me explain something to y'all because I know you're probably watching like I've said numerous times. You can watch all you want. I've survived too much in my life to be worried about any of you trolls, okay? So, That's a I submitted my resignation on Saturday. They're trying to hold it off till um, the 10th. My CID is 438173. Can y'all report me so they can hurry up? Because I'm trying to get rid of these packages. Like, I'm waiting for them. I'm not going to wait for them to come. Like, you I'm going to do that. Like, I don't girl. care. At the end of the day, I have to live with myself. I don't care what any of y'all think. You're not putting money in my pocket. You're not helping me feed my kids. You're not wiping my ass. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, but they're watching. What's that mean? Then watch oh me fly. Okay, let them watch, watch me. me because they were watching me before. There's a reason why I was only a month into this company and my upline. Pulled, I was the only new person in her little March Madness group, which we'll get to eventually at some point, but that they were, they're training. There's a reason why she wanted me to do it because she knew me from before. She knew my hustle. She knew my work ethic. So don't think that for a second that I couldn't have made it because I could have, but I choose not to. Mm -hmm. Girl, I leaving, just had to leave that out there. Leaving means you are a success. It doesn't mean you failed. It means you won, girl. You won. No. You survived. Mm -hmm. We're proud to know you. I'm so glad you reached out to us. We appreciate you coming on, and we're going to have you back because I don't think you got to tell your whole story. I think I there's more to be a step. I love a good badass chick. Look, Jerry's back, y'all. <clears throat> Fiona, I don't know what here. <laughs> Did you spill your tea on the microphone? I'm just kidding. I I wasn't even I done. She got so fired up, she broke the grid. The electric grid sparked. They're like, oh, I, I take think it. it's too much. It was like Harry at the prom. She overloaded the camera or something. Yeah. Like. This is what we'll do. 
the people knew the gist of it. My next tea time, I'm going to duplicate that rant and I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again until you hear me. I am not friends with any disgusting person in paparazzi who still recruits, puts money in their pocket and is flat out greedy and thinks that money is is more important than people's lives and literally, literally people's lives now. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. Truth. Truth. Okay, in closing, because we're trying to keep it under an hour, we totally fail, but we're trying, y'all. Um, if you are a former paparazzi consultant and you would like to see what we're doing to help each other grow outside of that place, we have a group on Facebook called Recovering Paparazzi Consultants. If you're out and happy about it, so please request to join. Uh, you have to answer the questions or we're going to ding you because we got too many moles, y'all. Um, yeah, I was going to say mention that. I've hit ding, ding, ding on a because I've never answered the questions. Yeah, we're just dinging yeah, them because we are not dealing. If you, the question is, are you out of paparazzi? It better be yes or don't even bother. Your consultant ID so we can check and do you agree to the rules? It's three simple questions. It's not that hard. Um, if you liked Tea Time, we're going to be putting it up on our pages, our YouTube channel. We're trying to get a podcast together. Um, we usually do tea on Tuesday. It's Tuesday tea, but we're going to have to be doubling down, like Jerry said, because people have so much to say. Um, and if you would like to be a guest on Tea Time, please reach out to us. I'm Tracy Reed. Um, this, you can just comment on these videos or you can reach out to us an instant message. Um, but just come through the paparazzi former consultants group, um, recovering paparazzi consultants group, come and join us y'all. That's the best place to find us all. Okay. Yeah. On my business page, my, this live stream is on my business page. Don't message me there. You message me yeah. on my personal profile page. You're going to get my message, my message bot. I'm going to amp that bot. So that way it gives you my YouTube link, but it does have the link to my uh, personal profile, my personal page, not my business page. Um, and you can message me there. If you guys have a hard time finding the replays, you can look at Tracy's YouTube. You can look at my YouTube. It's going to keep on coming. We're not it's going quitting. To I don't care how many people threaten me. I don't care. And we have a whole lot to say still. A lot of stuff that you are oh, yeah. probably going to be quite how shocked much to hear. Say? Don't forget about all the live videos I have screen recorded on yes. my phone. You guys can do your We will be videos. doing, so there is a couple of live videos. That Reaction videos, that I, that's um, right. That um, I have still not seen. I have not seen two of Taylor Kirby's live videos. I haven't seen a one from that Patty did. So we're actually going to do real time viewing so we can pause it and I will we will give our commentary about how we feel uh regarding those videos. A lot of people will tell me did tidbits about it, which I don't care because I don't have time for that crap, but we will do real live reactions. Oh, I want to be here. I love making faces. Okay, I, I didn't put up too many of the comments because they were going by so fast, but here's one that I want to put up. Look at Miss Crystal Charlton, y'all. Yes, girl. Go, Crystal. Yes, girl. Go, Crystal. Go, Crystal. Go, go. As if you wasn't for real, you are now. So welcome <laughs> to the group. <laughs> Woo. Which we want to say. I want to say that. Thank you for bringing that up. Then we'll definitely go. Paparazzi is literally entertaining everybody sending in any screenshot of consultants that if you are watching this and you comment in any way, shape, or form, even if it's not defamatory to um, paparazzi, these trolls are now going through your entire Facebook to find something. I had somebody message me today. I haven't asked her if I could use her name yet, so I'm not going to use her name. She commented something on our um, last tea time. It was not defamatory. It was just a comment. Uh, a paparazzi hun trolled her account, went back two years and found one minor compliance instance and they canceled her with no questions asked canceled her no questions asked so you know that little yeah last yeah. time we did when she said you know but they i've never been suspended they don't just cancel you your first time i'm i'm an innocent child from god yeah no uh -huh. so if you guys are here and you type anything and you're a consultant prepared to be canceled and you will be joining this side. I feel like we're Star Wars now. But uh, just so you know, they're that serious. But paparazzi still is going out of their way to protect Taylor Kirby, who threatens females, 
who um who makes fun of people calls names gives false statements based on the company they also protect patty shevlin who did not get suspended or canceled when she clearly violated. And if you guys didn't see that tea time and you don't want to see two hours and 50 minutes, just watch the last hour of it where we clearly showed how she made a violation and they didn't care that other people did the same exact violation. They were canceled. No questions asked, but Patty's allowed to do it and she's not canceled. So paparazzi, they, they want to protect their bullies. They, they protect their bullies. They can protect their bullies. About, can we talk about how easily my own husband was canceled? How had that go again? It literally, Next tea time. Wow. Tea, save me. Save me. Oh, it's good. And girl, we got security camera footage, all kind of stuff. All the receipts. All, all the receipts. receipts. All the receipts. Okay. I just want to thank everybody for hanging out with us. I want to thank Alisa. And I want to thank Will. And I want to thank Andrew um, from Feisty and Tracy. Hashtag crack the crown. That's the crowd. We'll be back with some more hot tea as soon Stay as we can. Stay, Stay feisty. Like, Stay feisty. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>